talk on equality, diversity and inclusivity. In the wake of the French Revolution, the triplet of liberty, equality and fraternity emerged as a moral compass for the secular society of its time. Something similar has happened today in regard to equality, diversity and inclusion. For most pundits and social activists, at least in the West, these three values function as self-evident moral truths of absolute value that ought to guide our behaviour at both the personal and institutional level. But I think this can be questioned. First, let us consider equality. Fostering equality is indeed a high moral value in the measure that all people are identical in dignity and are equally deserving of respect. The American Declaration of, Repentance, of Independence puts it like this, all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. All people are to be considered one and the same before the law and provided, as far as possible, with parity of opportunity in the educational, economic and cultural spheres. But is equality an absolute value? No, is the answer. Many inequalities already exist within human society. Differences in sex, religion and culture are being endangered. Personal differences such as inte intelligence, creativity, skill, courage could be eliminated but only through a brutally imposed levelling out process. A blanket imposition of equality across all of our society would result in a massive violation of justice. Certain indigenous cultures in our present day world are under threat of erasure. The emerging cancel culture that we hear so much about these days is also an example of this. That even smacks of totalitarianism. Now let us look at diversity. Arguably, the oldest problem in the history of philosophy is that of the one and the many. I believe it is fair to say that in the last 40 years or so, we have massively emphasized the many, highlighting variety, difference and creativity, and tending to demonize unity as oppression. The cultivation of diversity may well be a moral value, but not at the expense of overall unity which binds a society together and gives it a common sense of purpose. In that sense, diversity is not an absolute value. When the many is overemphasized, we lose any sense of the values that ought to unite us. Our very Christian culture is threatened. This is obviously in the stress today on the individual's rights to de determine his or her own values and truths, even to the point of dictating one's own gender and sexuality. That's how far it's gone. People succumbing to this agenda loudly demand that their decisions be respected and their stances tolerated. But the long-standing cultural ties which bind a nation together are given short shrift. And finally, let us cast a glance at inclusivity. This is probably the one most treasured in the secular culture of today. At all costs, we are told, over and over again, we should be inclusive, as there is an obviously moral value to this stance. That is true. Every one of us has felt the sting of unjust exclusion. That sense of being on the wrong side of the social divide, not permitted to belong to the in crowd, Hence the summons to include rather than exclude, to build bridges rather than walls, is entirely understandable and morally laudable. Nevertheless, inclusion 
cannot be an absolute value. Perhaps this principle can be seen with greater clarity in regard to the church. On the one hand, the church is meant to reach out to everyone, as is suggested symbolically by the Bernini colonnade outside St. Peter's Basilica. The colonnade is like a mother embracing all her children. So the universal nature of the church is brought out there where no one is excluded. Yet at the same time, the church is a very definite society with rules and expectations and internal structures. By its nature, therefore, it excludes certain forms of thought and behavior. Cardinal Francis George from America was once asked whether all people are welcome in the church. He responded, yes, but on Christ's terms, not our own. For instance, the church excludes women from ordination because it sees it as incompatible with the will of Christ. For the same reason, it prohibits same-sex so-called marriage in church. Having shown then that none of the three great secular values are in fact absolute values, are we left in no man's land, guided solely by our own shaky moral compass? No, in point of fact, the supreme value that trumps every other value can be clearly named. It is love. Love always wills the overall good of another, which is the very nature and essence of God himself. Are equality, diversity, and inclusivity valuable? Yes, precisely in the measure that they are expressions of love. But love sometimes means, and oftentimes means perhaps, we say no and exclude certain things. In the Gospel, there is ample evidence where people are actually excluded. The foolish bridesmaids arrived late and were barred from the wedding feast. The man without his wedding garment was thrown out into the dark. The unforgiving servant was shown little mercy. And the goats on Christ's left hand were excluded from paradise itself. Actually, these people excluded themselves. Christ excludes no one. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all.